Our next team presentation is in the area of mathematics. We have Noah Golowicz uh, from Lexington High School and Kafish Gandhi from Newton North High School, both in Massachusetts. Their mentor is Mr. Laszlo Lovash, a graduate student at MIT. Gentlemen. Good morning. Our project is on the partition regularity of linear homogeneous equations and inequalities. That's Kavish and I'm Noah. Our project is in a field of mathematics called Ramsey theory. And the general idea of Ramsey theory is to show that complete disorder cannot exist. So the way you do this is you take large and complex systems and you show that certain patterns must emerge within these systems. Now Ramsey theory has several applications, such as in game theory, computer science, and number theory. A simple example of Ramsey theory is the game, you take a three by three grid and partition it into two subsets or colors. And this game is more commonly known as tic-tac-toe. One of the problems of tic-tac-toe is that there is a coloring of this three by three grid where there are no one colored lines. In other words, tic-tac-toe has ties. And an example of a tie is shown right here. Now it turns out that if you extend a three by three grid to a four dimensional three by three by three by three grid, then no matter how you color it with two colors, you will always have a one colored line in that hypercube. In other words, if two players play tic-tac-toe in that hypercube, they will never have a tie. The Hales and Jewett theorem extended the idea of adding dimensions to guarantee one colored lines to any number of colors and edge length. So in this example, there are two colors, red and blue, which is also the number of players. And the edge length is three. But Hales and Jewett show that this result will be true for any number of colors and edge length. Another important early result in Ramsey theory is Schur's theorem, which states that for any finite coloring of the integers, there exists some x, y, and z that are the same color or monochromatic that satisfy this equation here, x plus y equals z. Now, Schur's theorem really exemplifies how many results in Ramsey theory, although originally conceived of as colorings of large systems or graphs or the integers in this case, often have widespread implications in other areas of mathematics. In particular, Schur, as a corollary of his results, was able to prove that this equation here uh, this equation here, um, for mass last theorem, modulo p, has non-trivial solutions for sufficiently large primes p. In essence, he was able to prove an important number theoretical result for the time, that for mass last theorem is false in the integer modulo p. Now, as it turns out, Schur's theorem is actually a consequence of the more general Rado's theorem, which deals with linear modulus equations of the form shown here, where the coefficients are non-zero integers, and the xi, what we're solving for, are natural numbers. We call such an equation regular, if, for any finite calling of the natural numbers, there exists some xi that are solutions to the equations and are the same color. Um, now, what Rado's theorem does is it classifies such regular equations. Um, specifically, it classifies systems of linear modulus equations, but in the case of a single linear modulus equation, it says that it is regular if and only if some non-empty subset of its coefficients sums to zero. Um, so an example of this is Schur's equation, x plus y minus c equals zero, which is regular by Rado's theorem since one minus one is equal to zero. However, not all equations are regular. In fact, only a small subset of all linear modulus equations are regular. And therefore, we define non-regular equations by their R regularity. That is, an equation is R regular if for any finite calling of the natural numbers with R colors, there exists monochromatic Xi that satisfy the equation. Um, in particular, a regular equation is just an R regular equation for all positive integers R. An example of R regularity is this equation here, which can be shown to be too regular. Um, now, we further define the degree of regularity of a R regular equation as the largest positive integer R, such that it is R regular. So, for example, the equation I just mentioned can be shown to not be three regular with this coloring here extended to all of the natural numbers. And therefore, its degree of regularity is equal to two. Um, in general, the classification of R regular equations is pretty open. There's no Rado's theorem equivalent for R regular equations. However, Rado did make a conjecture in conjunction with the seminal theorem that for every positive integer r, there exists some linear modulus equation with a degree of regularity equal to r. Um, and this conjecture was actually extremely important for many years. It was open for more than 70 years. Um, until finally, in 2009, Alex Eve and Zimmerman confirmed it with this family of equations shown here, um, showing that it has a degree of regularity of n minus 1 for all positive integers n greater than or equal to 2. 
In order to show that these equations had a degree of regularity of n minus 1, it's necessary to show that they're n minus 1 regular. In other words, for any n minus 1 coloring of the integers, there exists a, a monochromatic solution to the equation. Now, Lexium and Zimmerman did this, but their xi through, uh, x1 through xn that satisfied the equation n, n were monochromatic had the additional property that all but one of them were equal. So that means they're guaranteed to be the same color, and this solution is degenerate. For example, for any n value, if the integers 1 and 2 were colored the same color, say red, and um, then we can take each of the x1 through xn and set um, each of them equal to either 1 or 2, and that would be a one-colored solution to the linear homogeneous equation. That would be a red solution. The problem with this is this does not tell us anything about the coloring of the integers from 3 on. Now, the, we would like to know about the coloring of n tuples of n distinct integers. So the question we ask is, does a solution exist where all of the xi are distinct? And more generally, how is the degree of regularity affected if we add a set of inequalities such as this shown here? Now, the, the specific, specific case that x1 does not equal x2 is a specific case of these inequalities. Now, we show that for Alexium and Zimmerman's equations and a much larger class of equations, that no matter what set of inequalities we take, the system of the equation and the set of inequalities, um, the, the degree of regularity of that is not affected by the addition of the inequalities. Now, in order to talk about this, I make a definition that a linear homogeneous equation is strongly R regular if the system of the equation and any finite set of inequalities we take is still R regular. So in order to classify the exact set of equations which we show to be strongly R regular, we make the definition that given a linear homogeneous equation, we define SL as that quotient where L is between 1 and n. Now this is important because n tuples such as these right here are solutions to, to, the, to the equation. Now these solutions are degenerate because all but one of the coordinates are equal. However, we can form non-degenerate solutions by adding a small integer to each of the coordinates of the n-tuple in a way such, the, such that the n-tuple remains monochromatic and a solution to the equation. We also make a definition that an upper triangular matrix B has a linkage property if it is of this form, the little b1 to the little bm or any positive integers. Now, our main theorem combines these two definitions, and it says that we assume that we have a linear homogeneous equation and a positive integer m. And we also assume that there exists an upper triangular m by m matrix for which each of its non-zero entries, that's the m tree in the upper half of it, is positive and equal to SL for some L. And if this matrix has a linkage property, then the equation is strongly m regular. So an example of an application of this theorem is for this linear homogeneous equation here. For this equation, we have S1 equals 4 and S2 equals 2. Now this matrix right here uh, is filled with S1 and S2, is upper triangular, and it has the linkage property since 2 times 2 equals 4. Therefore, by our theorem, this equation is strongly 2 regular. I'm going to outline the proof of this theorem for m equals 3, but, this, but we extend this proof uh, for all integers m. The first step is to assume that there's some three coloring of the positive integers for which there's no monochromatic solution to the equation and any finite set of inequalities. The purpose of this is for, to reach an eventual contradiction. Now, we also assume that this matrix right here has the linkage property. The, uh, the next step is to use the hales jewett theorem, which I mentioned earlier, to find a monochromatic set V. Now, I'm assuming that the integers are colored with the colors red, green, and blue. So the set is represented by a red circle. The next step is to show that there exists two colored sets whose elements are approximately SL11, SL12, and SL13 times the elements of V. Now, these are represented by the blue and green circles. And there are small red dots in them, which denote exceptions to the colorings. In other words, those elements' colors are not known. Now, we show that these exceptions are bounded, so they do not cause a problem in the proof of our main result. So what we've done in this step is we've taken a three coloring of the positive integers, and we've reduced it to a two coloring of these sets. Now, this gets us closer to a monochromatic solution. And we repeat this step twice more to eventually show that there exists a zero-colored subset, which is represented by a white circle right there. Now, the reason this works is because this matrix has a linkage property, which essentially allows all of these sets shown here to line up with each other the right way. Now, this zero-colored subset is a contradiction because the elements in it cannot be colored any color, and we originally assumed there's some three-coloring of the integers that colors every integer a color. So this finishes the proof of our theorem. 
Um, so our main theorem has many implications. And first and foremost, we can resolve our motivational question. We can show that Alex and Zimmerman's family of equations is strongly n minus 1 regular. So the addition of a finite number of inequalities did not affect their degree of regularity. And we can still find a monochromatic solution where the x side are distinct from one another and satisfy the equation. Um, furthermore, our main theorem can be used to classify another widely studied set of equations shown here, which, like those of Alex and Zimmerman, were actually conjectured to be n minus 1 regular for all positive integers n greater than or equal to 2. Um, specifically, Falk and Radici showed this for n equals 3. And what our uh, main theorem can show is that these equations for n equals 3 are strongly 2 regular for all positive integers p greater than 1. In conclusion, our results are significant for several reasons. First and foremost, they classify many equations. We gain a broader understanding in general of our regularity. Second, they eliminate previously degenerate solutions to important conjectures, like that of Alex and Zimmerman, but also in general, those where the xi were not necessarily distinct from one another or did not necessarily satisfy a finite number of inequalities. Third, they pave the way for future research for, into the degree of regularity of, of equations, in particular into whether the degree of regularity is ever affected by the addition of, uh, the addition of a finite number of inequalities or whether our um, results generalize to systems of linear homogeneous equations. And finally, our results have numerous potential applications, in particular those of Ramsey theory in fields like computer science, game theory, number theory, and in general any field that deals with large systems and certain patterns that must be found within them. Um, finally, this work could not have been done with, um, without the help of many people. Um, first and foremost, Laszlo Miklos Lavas, um, our mentor for his invaluable guidance throughout, Professor Jacob Fox for suggesting our project, um, the MIT Prime pro Program as a whole and all people involved for helping facilitate our research, um, the Siemens Foundation, George Washington University, and the University of Notre Dame for, um, for, their, for being such gracious hosts throughout the competition process, our families for their endless support throughout, um, and to you, our audience, for listening. References. References. Next slide.